so we were talking about uh, uh, you know violation of international law now we'll move on to the next with respect to the situation in ukraine the international this is like uh, you know an example for you of the current affairs the international criminal court prosecutor is all set to investigate allegations of war crimes and crimes against humanity and the crime of genocide against russia but the icc that is the international criminal court is empowered to exercise jurisdiction only over natural persons that means not over countries or governments it can exercise jurisdiction only over natural persons in other words it may institute proceedings only against individual human beings or humans the icc has no jurisdiction over the entities or government or military now the international criminal court sits in the netherlands it's a forum for prosecution of war crimes genocide and crimes against humanity and the icc has been exist in existence since 2002 now what is the chief purpose the chief purpose of icc is to prosecute national leaders for serious infringement of human rights more than 100 countries are party to the icc however the united states israel and russia are still not parties now the icc can levy prison term but it cannot give capital punishment that it cannot give death penalty now next yet another body is united nations security council which is empowered to monitor international infringement of rights of the nations and the purpose of united nations security council is to maintain and regulate peace between nations and if a nation violates violates an international agreement or otherwise acts inappropriately then they have the power to authorize sanctions now what are the branches of international law broadly there are two branches use gentium and use inter gentis the use gentium is also called as the law of nations or municipal law or the local laws and it is not a statute or a legal code but more of an accepted body of law that governs a relationship between countries now, what is use intergentis that is on the other hand it refers to you know it's, it's a borrowed concept from the roman law and this concept which literally means laws between the people now it is a body of treaties un conventions and other international agreements which is a major part of public international law i'm sure you know of the ilo international labor organization international labor organization has got you know several you know regulations that needs to be followed in the best interest of the working class you see then you have the different covenants which are there like covenants of elimination of crime against women or elimination of discrimination against women that's called a cedaw ce -E, i mean abbreviated from c e d a w cedaw then you have a convention on the rights of a child you have got declaration on the rights of a child you got universal declaration of human rights which is a basic doc document so you see all these uh, form a part of international law and internationally recognized human rights form a part of these documents and they are called as use intergentis that means these are the law between people in the form of treaties and so on where there are state parties who are signatories that is those who sign and they say that they are going to be party to these treaties and conventions or covenants they uh, so they they in case of any infringement then they would be held responsible for the infringement and they would be you know taken to task for any violation types of international law public and private public international law refers to those nations and persons that may be affected by particular laws <coughs> sorry such as customary public international law which involves regular state practices that rely on opinion juris globally accepted standards that govern behavior and or legal codes that are written into agreements referred to as treaties public international law includes federal laws criminal laws human rights laws maritime laws refugee laws the laws of war and so on thereby public international law includes all agreements treaties as well as protocols there are attached protocols they are called as protocols treaties have additional documents attached to it called as protocols since this is not a entirely uh, you know an entire subject of international law i'm not going into the depth and i'm i, I will not be teaching like uh, in, in fact i'm not expected to teach like all the documents but it will suffice for you to know that treaties also have protocols conventions and so on they all form a part of international law as a system that regulates the way in which states coordinate in the relationship with each other 
Now, private international law governs private conflicts between individuals. Like, for example, you have a company uh, which has, uh, you know, its branches, say, in two, three nations or two, three countries. So in case of any dispute, now, which, which jurisdiction or which law would the, uh, you know, the parties would want to apply? So this is like private international law. This is an example of a private dispute which has to use private international law. Next is supranational law, supranational, supranational. That's it refers to a situation where a nation surrender to the court their right to make certain judicial decisions. Example, European Court of Justice, they say, okay, I, whatever the court decides, we will, you know, uh, we will abide by it. That is supranational law. Next is international criminal law. Now, this is a subsect of public international law. It's a, it's a part of public international law that works to punish those who commit crimes of a more severe nature that often attack large groups of people. Example, genocide. What is genocide? Mass killing, mass murders. Genocide means mass killing, mass murder, or war crimes, etc. What are the sources of international law? Treaties and conventions. I gave you an example of convention. Convention on the rights of a child. Convention on elimination on all form of discrimination against women. CEDAW. Likewise, different conventions. Then treaties, labor conventions. Roman law is a source of international law. Customary practices between the nations is a source of international law. International judicial precedents, where that means the judgments made by the ICJ, judgments made by the uh, International Criminal Court, the judgments that are laid down, they are judicial precedents. Again, they form a source of international law. Municipal laws are state laws, laws of you know independent nations. They are also source of international law. <laughs> Sorry. The jurist opinion and treaties, that is, uh, different jurist opinion and treaties. Treat, treaties, I'm not talking about treaties, you see the spelling there. T R E A T I S E, treaties. And I'm not talking about treaties, I'm talking about treaties. That means there are books, you know, jurist opinion and treaties, mean, that means they write books or they come up with manuals or, you know, like. Uh, you know, something as a result of a research work and they come up with uh, some material, written material, that is treaties. I'm not talking about treaties. I'm talking about treaties. See the spelling? T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E, -E, treaties. What is treaties? T-I-E-S, T-R-E-A-T-I-E-S. Treaties and conventions is different from opinion and treaties. Next is international law covers some of the following areas. What is the scope of it? It covers human rights, protection of refugees, prosecution for international crimes, arms agreements and control, state border claims. You know, what's border claims? Where, you know, countries fight for, you know, border, border disputes. Uh, like for example, uh, the world knows about India and Pakistan's border dispute for, you know, Kashmir. So there's a small region of Kashmir. So, so they have the border dispute between the uh, two nations. Again, China also has got border dispute with India on the other side or the Eastern side. So border disputes. Then regulating common spaces like seas, water and outer space. Like I'm sure you know that uh, air space is governed by international law, air, air space. You know, you have the aircrafts flying. You cannot you know, fly from one country to another, you in the sense, uh, what to say now, any aircraft or a carrier, air carrier cannot fly through any other skies without permission of that particular country. Why? Because of international law, permission has to be sought. And in case they trespass or they go, I mean, they fly over that particular region, then the military of that particular, you know, nation would, uh, you know, circumvent their uh, their routes and also try to, you know, uh, stop them or prevent them from flying further or even arrest them. Likewise, even the seas, the high seas, you call it, you call it high seas. You see the oceans, in the high seas. You uh, even through sea, you can travel from one country to another. You without permission, ships cannot go to any other region. 
like there are so many uh, problems which took place between uh, i think india and sri lanka also where there were indian fishermen who by mistake went you know uh, while they were shipping they uh, you know trespassed and went to the sri lankan waters and they were you know arrested there and you know after a lot of uh, intervention they were released why because they are governed by international laws you're not supposed to trespass countries even by air or sea without permission so next is preventing wars prisoners of war who are prisoners of war like when there is a war and uh, any of the army is you know taken uh, the the uh, uh, the the country which wins a war then it it would take the uh, the other country who's lost the war as prisoners of war that they are called as pow's prisoners of war or humanitarian aid humanitarian aid comes when there is a question of war humanitarian aid means aid given in times of war in the sense like you have this red cross you know they give um, medical uh, first aid and all you know that is humanitarian aid or even it it comes in various forms even food supplies during war humanitarian aid then environment climate change all these come within the ambit of international law but what is the purpose of international law that is of course to resolve disputes to have uh, you know peaceful relations to maintain comity that is uh, unity and peaceful relations with one another then uh, adopt common rules for multinational activities and so on therefore the enormous body of international law encompasses a spasmodic collection of international customs agreements treaties accords charters that is the un charter which is very important protocols tribunals memorandums legal precedents of the international court of justice that is the world court it's also called as the world court then also you have this international criminal court documents such as udhr what is udhr universal declaration of human rights 1948 etc so there are several conventions such as convention on rights of a woman convention on rights of a child convention of elimination of all forms of discrimination all these examples are form of they form a part of international law thus it governs not only relationship between state parties but also regulates peaceful relationship between the nation on the principle of comity and unity it fights human rights violation and aids in humanitarian crisis etc so this is all about international law now this is the last class for your topic of jurisprudence because anyway this was a, a kind of a lighter chapters and uh, your exam is fast approaching and so you are uh, you know you are asked by the university to concentrate on your exams as well i'll try to post important questions as fast as possible if possible by tonight or at least tomorrow on uh, you know on uh, jurisprudence uh, if you have any questions you can ask me so this would be with le uh, lecture 7 and lecture 8 i have uh, combined it in one slide and uh, i will post it or uh, whatever details i'll just post it on your google classroom so the next class would be for your law of torts again that would be the last class so just get ready for your exams i'll try my best again to give uh, important questions uh, you have anything to ask me <coughs> sorry okay so okay now question on assignments you can submit your assignments as per the dates which are given late submission uh, i think for caste would be uh, 11th or 12th one of the day whatever i have given you it is already featuring in your google classroom and uh, that's all from my side for uh, the law of uh, not the law uh, for uh, you know for jurisprudence if you have any questions you can ask me if not we will disperse we will meet again on wednesday same time Thank attendance you. is a abdurrahman aisha kasim nema 1 2 3 4 5 okay two are absent 
one is deek and who is the other one one two three four five okay the other person is absent fine so attendance will be granted to isa abdurrahman aisha kasim naima okay see you on wednesday thank you professor welcome welcome aisha thank you professor you're welcome abdurrahman Yes, sir. Sorry for your sickness. Adhiraman, it said, "Okay, you're welcome." Okay, I'm winding up. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Bye.